Today, I wanted to take a look at whether it's possible using some digital audio software and a simple keyboard to build an entire organ performance. Early in the pandemic, I had the experience of needing to record um, just a couple organ parts, and I wasn't anywhere near a full-size organ. Um, and it could be that for some of you out there, you only have one keyboard and just wanted to be able to, to make an organ piece work inside of a recording or inside of a project you were building that had other elements like strings and you know, brass, whatever. Um, so I wanted to just sort of walk through how you would go about doing that. Um, and I will say that as I was new to how to work and new to kind of this whole process, I really didn't know how to go about it and wasn't able to, to get that answer, um, very readily. So hopefully this will be helpful to you. Um, so this will be a video with a lot more details. Um, and I'm assuming some knowledge of how to work, but if you have questions or if you would like me to go into more detail later, I'll be more than happy to do that. And again, I'm just putting this out here just because this is something that I struggled with finding an answer to. And so hopefully this will be this will be helpful to to someone. So um, in order to prepare Hauptwerk to receive um, information from another program, your first step is going to be to go to general settings and um, go to audio device and channels. Select that. And then one of your options will be uh, the Hauptwerk AU VST link. So select that. And that's going to enable Hauptwerk to be able to send information back and forth from uh, one of the digital audio workstations, or just, just for the sake of shortness, I'm just going to say DAW um, in the future. So uh, there's left and right is your output, and that'll work fine. So now, um, in order to make each keyboard receive its own information, and that was one of the things I was struggling with, um, you're going to need to go into organ settings and keyboards. So on my MIDI organ, the bottom keyboard is actually MIDI 4, and then the middle one is MIDI 1, top one is MIDI 2, the pedals are MIDI 3. Um, and you can figure that out by going through your auto detect settings, which are over here. Hopefully the cursor is showing up on the video. And, um, and then if you pay attention down below, you'll see that the MIDI channel is in fact four. So, um, so the software will identify where the MIDI information is coming from. And you'll need to mimic that in the software that you're using in order for everything to, to go to the right place. So um, if I were playing my uh, the organ that I've got here, I would be using the MIDI link. But for the purposes of making this work with a DAW, we're going to use, again, the Hauptwerk AU VST link. And I've already set that up here, but um, here we go. So here's, here it is with the, the primary manual is one, and then there's two. You have an option with, with uh, Rotterdam, um, Lawrence Kirk, where you can... Um, either treat this those other two manuals as floating divisions that you couple, or you can actually sort of pile them all onto the top manual. Or I mean, you're really kind of free to to set it up however you want to. Um, for this, we're just treating this as a three manual instrument, and then the pedal um, is channel three. So once that's all set up, you're good to go. Um, and then we're going to select a basic registration here. So we're going to treat this first keyboard as the accompaniment with just an eight foot flute. The pedal is going to have a 16 foot flute and um, we're going to couple the first manual down to it just for to give it a little clarity. And then on this keyboard, we'll turn on the tremulant and use the use sort of a gap registration here. So um, that's all you need to do to get helped work prepared. Now we're going to go over to Reaper. So inside of Reaper, I've opened up a brand new project. And if you go to track, you're going to first select insert virtual instrument on new track. And um, to find how to work quickly, you can just start typing. And then I found that the AU link works just fine. So we'll use that. Um, I'm not going to select the additional routing confirmation uh, for a number of reasons, but again, just for simplicity's sake, we're just going to just use the um, the one channel here. 
so. And then that should be sufficient. Um, and you'll see that now this, this has appeared. Um, I find it easiest to visualize everything in the mixer view. So that's um, from a Mac command M, but you can see over here, here is view and then mixer is right up towards the top. Um, so we're going to point all of the MIDI channels towards this first channel. And all that means is that you're going to play, play the notes in and then give them the identity of the corresponding keyboard that you would like to use. So if we have an accompaniment that's on the first manual, all those, all those notes need to be MIDI channel four. And the thing that's, that's really great about Reaper is that you can point them all towards um, that first channel and it'll receive it as, as um, an input. You can't use that MIDI AU link on multiple channels. It, it would be really easy if that were the case, but it you, you can't um, because if, if you do, then you start to get a, a glitchy digital sound. So it doesn't work. So anyhow, so we're going to create a new track. And now this track, if I was playing it in with my MIDI organ, I would need to make sure that I um, go MIDI one, two, three, or four, um, in order to make that work. Uh, if I'm playing it in with a keyboard, then all I, it really doesn't matter what MIDI channel I select because, um, once I've played the part in, I'm going to have to reassign that MIDI information in order to make each MIDI channel work later. All I have to do is play in the part. And then once I've played the part, I have to reassign those notes to whatever manual I want them to go on. So I can play in the whole accompaniment track. And then once I'm done, I just select everything and select MIDI four. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So all I have to do is create the number of tracks that correspond to the number of keyboards that I want. Um, going back to the track view, all you have to do is duplicate the track, um, which is here. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate that a couple times. Once I've made the MIDI choices that I'm going to make for that track, um, which are in this drop down menu right here. So, um, for this, I can say input MIDI. And then again, it just depends on, um, what kind of an input I would like to use. I'm going to go ahead and jump to where I have already recorded and built the little bit of Indulce Ubelo just to kind of save time here. The other really important step in this whole process is that you need to um, go to the top of each MIDI channel and create a send that's going to point it back to the first channel. So if you just click up here, this is where the sends live and you're going to select from the sends your first channel. So the first channel being helped work. So that's, that's the last thing you would need to do. I did find as I was working with it, um, that there was a little bit of latency. So I decided that actually the easiest thing to do to make sure that all of the tracks wound up, um, being in sync with each other, I, I wound up just using a stock synth sound. Um, so, uh, this, this, uh, VST called resynth. um, with just the, you know, the generic sound that, that it gives you, um, worked just fine. So, um, so I used that. So I played each part individually and then, um, so that sounds like this. So they're the, they're the three parts together. And it is very important as you play things in that they, um, are aligned properly on the grid. And the reason for that is that although you know, as musicians, we all want to be expressive. If you're putting one part on top of another part, they do need to be quantized or else they'll all wind up being a mess. And quantizing for those of you who aren't familiar is just simply um, aligning the note as much as possible to a particular um, beat value. So this is the pedal line. Um, once I have entered in all of the notes, I'm going to hit command a or select all, um, if you're on a PC. Um, so here we go. Um, now there's a drop down menu knowing that all the notes are selected and I'm going to go to event properties. Going to event properties allows me to change the MIDI channel. So I'm going to go to MIDI channel three 
and that will correspond to the pedal. So now as I um, drag this, this group of MIDI notes up, it's going to be sending a signal to the pedal. So I'm going to select all of that, click apply, and then that will work. Once I have built in all three of the parts, then I'm going to go ahead and mute these channels and I'm going to drag these up to the channels that I intended for um, help to work. So um, once you've done that, I will mute these channels. No, I will mute these three channels. Unmute the organ. And we'll check to make sure that that all works. And you can hear now that the organ is being triggered. If we go over to help to work and go to the console, you can see that the organ is in fact playing and it works. So that's really all that's needed uh, to make Reaper be able to talk to Hauptwerk and Hauptwerk be able to talk to Reaper back. So I hope that helps you. And if you have any additional questions, please let me know in the comments down below. Um, please, if, if you haven't already, please take a second to subscribe because it does help. And um, thank you for watching. Hope you're doing well.